we gather together here this day to get away from it all apart. Praise the Lord, we never can. As we center down and ponder more deeply the wonderful works of God, we are invited to celebrate this world with him, concern ourselves with its issues and act with love, mess and justice in our day life. May we drink deeply from the well of life. Refresh us today, O living Lord, and endure us with the power of your love to think, speak, and walk justly. In your name, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning to you all, brothers and sisters in Christ, wherever you are. Let us pray. God of holiness, we bring you this morning all within us that needs healing, that which is visible and that which is hidden, that which we have shared with others and that known only to you. Stretch out your healing hands and give us the courage to believe that you can use our weakness and our strength in your service and that it is never too late to begin again. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I will call Brother Ben to come and read the word of God from Mark chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. Thank you, Brother. Good morning, family. It's a great day to be here to read the word to you guys and just to, um, yeah, to hear Johnson's message. Uh, it'll be a good one. But uh, as he mentioned, it'll, uh, the reading is from Mark 1, 29 to 39. And it's about Jesus heals many. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door. And Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so that I can preach there also. That is why I've come. So he travelled through Galilee, preaching in the synagogues and driving out demons. And that's the word of the Lord. And uh, wow, what a cool passage. It's going to be interesting what Johnson has to share. So, uh, Lord open our ears so we can receive in Jesus name have a good one thanks Johnson good morning once again um, I've decided to share with you on a theme a wall city at the door the wall city the wall town at the door Of my all-time favorite church magazine cartoons, pictures a physician in his office speaking with his bookkeeper. The subject of their conversation is a patient's bill, which apparently had been in the accounts receivable file for a long, long time. The bookkeeper says to the doctor, he says that since you told him his recovery was a miracle, he sent his check to the church. Our passage from Mark touches on the subject of miraculous healing. This early sequence of events in Jesus' ministry seems to set the stage for his growing reputation. Mark says at once his fame began to spread everywhere throughout the surrounding region on verse 28. The whole city was gathered around the door. Everyone is searching for you. Jesus could no longer go into a town openly and people came to him from every quarter. If you invent a better mousetrap, the saying goes, and the world will beat a path at your door. Well, Jesus simply healed people. 
treated them for the demons that traumatized them and their families. And the people came to him in great mobs and multitudes. So without having moved beyond the very first chapter of Mark's gospel, Jesus' ministry seems to have changed into an overnight success. Ask a person on the street what function churches are supposed to feel in our culture, and if they are not outright hostile towards religious faith, they will likely answer that the purpose of the church and its ministry is to do good works, to help make the world a little bit better place. I know for certain that the numerous transits who come through the doors of our churches in our neighborhood every day are hoping they can count on that common assumption that the purpose driving a church is the desire to do good things for people who need to have good things done. So what kind of church worth of the name wouldn't do that? It's a pretty nice arrangement if that is the purpose of the church. We need to do good things. Host of people need good things done. The world must be perfectly organized. But today's lesson is, does not confirm that as primary definition of ministry, at least not the ministry of Jesus. So from time to time, politicians and others will make broad statements about the churches in our country as organizations whose purpose is to minister to the needs of people, feed them, help them in their search for health care, and so on. I dare say many of us seated here would join that chorus of voices which refers to the church and its ministries as helping institutions, employing people who are helping professionals. But today's lesson does not confirm that limited definition of ministry, at least not the ministry of Jesus. I suspect that this was also the sort of assumption driving the people who came flocking to see Jesus in the early days of his ministry. Mark tells us that the following his temptation in the wilderness, Jesus came to Galilee. This region where today's passage finds Jesus healing and casting out demons, proclaiming the good news of God. That is what he was doing. Mark 1 chapter 14 says that that is the very first thing said of Jesus' ministry in the gospel, that he came proclaiming the good news of God. So his mission was proclaiming the good news of God. This is the clue that he also understand why. When the mobs were beating a path to his door and the disciples came to find him, so he could continue in his high growth ministry opportunity, that he did not choose the do good thing, definition of ministry, that he chose instead to move on to neighboring towns so that, as he said, I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came to do. In verse 38. That is what he came to do, to proclaim the message. In the process of his proclamation, healings were signs of the message. Signs were meant to save the message, not the other way around. Jesus fed his own ministry by retreating to quiet places to pray and reflect. He did not become a television preacher pursuing a non-stop popular ministry. His own disciples seems eager enough for him to do so. But Jesus knew the focus of his ministry. It included healing and doing good. But healing and doing good did not exhaust the purpose of his ministry. Likely, if we take our cue from him, it should not totally define our, or characterize I, I, as ours either. There is a story of a wise old pastor who saw a man from his church hurrying along the street, so preoccupied with the task he was looking neither right nor left. Why are you rushing so much? The pastor asked the man. I am rushing after my life would. The man answered. And how do you know? Asked the pastor. That your life would is running on your own in front of you so that you have to rush after it. Or perhaps it's behind you. And all you need to do is stand still. So the disciples came to him in a rush of misplaced enthusiasm. What are you doing out here praying in the desert? The whole town is looking for you. Your ministry is a success. Come on back and greet the marches in Galilee. Jesus' response was not to go back, but rather to press on in pursuit of what he came to do. And what was it to proclaim the message? His purpose was to proclaim the message. In a way, he came out to preach. He came out to proclaim the truth about God. Everything else about his ministry was secondary to the ultimate goal. To tell the world the truth 
about a gracious, loving God who would stop at nothing to communicate his love for them. Marshall McLean was not the first to recognize the danger that the medium could become the message. Jesus knew it too and saw the danger that his healing ministry might overshadow his proclamation. That he would be reduced to little more than another itinerant sideshow miracle worker. He rejected his role, left Capernaum, and went out through Galilee, pursuing his ministry of proclamation and assisting his message with signs and wonders, but keeping the content of his message over before him. So the church that takes its cue in ministry from Jesus himself will look long and hard at his statement about his ministry and his purpose. I can't tell you how many hundreds of conversations I have had with people over the years about the things the church ought and ought not to do in order to fill the pews, to get people to want to come to church. More of this sort of music, if we have this kind of music, I think more people will come to church. Ah, if we have less of this, more hymns, less dogma, less doctrine, more entertainment, less preaching and teaching. I've heard it all and I've heard it a hundred times. Then I look at the example of Jesus in this simple story. He healed, he cast out demons, and right away everyone we had a union was at the door knocking. But is what, that what Jesus was about? Did Jesus come into the world to borrow the language of John so that he would start a popular healing and exorcising ministry? John says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. Mark reports that Jesus' first act in his ministry was the act of proclamation, of preaching. What was he preaching? The word. So you can see now that in the beginning was the word, and now Jesus is preaching that word, and that is what he is there. There are three questions that would all benefit from us asking ourselves and our faith from time to time to help us keep focus as we walk the road of discipleship. For one thing, everybody needs meaning in their lives, don't they? Everybody needs something to believe in, something to guide them. Otherwise, they will wake up one day and realize that nothing in life makes sense. So you need something. Could it be they think to themselves that like the other animals, maybe we are just human beings, are just like other animals. We are simply born, live out our time on earth and then die. No, we are not like that. There is no meaning to love. There is no meaning to sorrow. There is no meaning to life itself like in other animals. Human beings are not like that. There is a missing point in their life. There is a gap in their life. Where are you, what are you looking for? And where are you looking for Jesus? It doesn't pay always to look for Jesus in the same place. I may have met him in prayer, but that does not preclude the meeting of Jesus in the face of another. We may have needed a certain aspect of the ministry of Christ, but that does not limit his availability to us in every other circumstances of our lives. Where are you looking for Jesus today? Where are you looking for Jesus? What do you want Jesus to do when you find him? Peter wanted Jesus to go back and keep on doing what he had been doing. What are you doing here? Everyone is looking for you. And Jesus, well, we want that. We would like all to go back to mountaintop experience of our life, to find him again, just the way we find him before. But Jesus has moved on with his message. And to stay with him, we need to move beyond the limits of our past and into the future where he's proclaiming who he is to all the world. He says, instead of going back to Galilee, let us move on to another city so that I can also preach to them which is my mission. So his mission was to preach. So he remained focused on his mission. Sometimes we get distracted by what people say and we, we forget who we are in our core. Remain focused on your call. What does Jesus want to do? That is the key question. With the whole city waiting at his door, why did he forego that promising healing ministry and move on instantly with his ministry of proclamation? What kind of savior do we want? What kind of savior do we want? Sadly, 
It is often a savior to do our own binding that we desire. We want a savior who can fit in our programs. We want a savior who can fit in our desires. Are we going to demand of him that we want or are we willing to follow no matter where he leads us? We are followers of Christ. So we cannot even manipulate who Christ is because we are followers. Let us follow Christ and where he wants us to be. Sometimes, especially when we want to support church leaders, this is an important question. There is a whole seat outside our door. What do we have to tell them about Jesus and his love? What should we tell the people when they come? Do we tell them what their ears are itching to hear? Do you tell them what they would want to hear? Or do you proclaim and teach what the Bible is saying? This is the main important thing. So what is Jesus' goal? Jesus, is to, Jesus says it is to preach. That was his goal. To preach. Preaching what? The word of God. Not a human philosophy. Not any other gospel. But the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is why I have come to preach. That is what Jesus says. There may be some healing along the way. Simon, let's not get lost in the Assyria. Let's stay focused, boys. That is what he's saying to his disciples. I have come to preach the kingdom of God and we must go somewhere else and preach. Their desire was to stay and remain in Galilee. But he's saying, no, 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 no. Let us go and preach in another area because that is what I've been sent to do, to preach. So he's continuing with preaching. Our goal is to win the lost world to Jesus Christ. Wherever we move, everywhere where we go, we should go preaching the word of God. When everyone is searching for you, remember to let them def not define your goal. You lose your focus and make your heart work more difficult. Don't lose your focus. Sometimes we hear these good comments and we lose our focus. We think we are somewhere where we are not. Let us remain focused. Our focus is to preach the word of God. Finally, when everyone is searching for you, remember to pray. That is what I heard. Jesus had gone out early in the morning, maybe around 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. to pray outside in the desert. And when Peter and other disciples followed him, that's why they say, why are you doing here? He was praying. Our Lord needed to, and so he do. There may not be a lot of time to get adequate prayers when the crowds are descending upon the house and there are 12 disciples coming at you. And demons to deal and sick family members, but find a moment even you have to hide. They will find you eventually. You know they will, but by then you have found some food for the journey. So when you pray, you are refilling really yourself with the fuel for the journey. You are going on. And you know what? That the food will help you to do. It will help you work hard. It will help you to keep focus. There is a lot of work out there that needs to get done at our jobs, at our homes, in our marriages, right here in the church, hard work for the kingdom of God, saving Christ. So whatever you do, remember you are not doing it to be praised by men, but you are doing it for God. You are saving God. So don't be diverted by what people say. Yours is, I want to save God and only God. It will help you do one thing, it would help you stay focused on your goal. It might not be your job to preach. Maybe some people are not able to preach. You may say, Johnson, we are not all preachers. Your job is likely elsewhere. But you won't get sidetracked and try to take on every job and every role in the kingdom. You will all go where you need to go and do what you can do. And that's enough. Amen to that. Do what you can. If, you, your, your, if your gift is administration, do it. Keep it on. If your gift is in, in giving, keep it on. Because that is what you know. You can do it better. But the word of God is saying, we need to share what we have with others. That's why Jesus said, I may not remain here in Galilee. I need to move to another area. They also need me. So our focus should remain preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Let us not preach something else. When we preach, let us preach what the Bible is saying. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And it is only the gospel of the kingdom of God that will win people to Christ. 
not our own persuasive intelligence or wisdom or anything else or our intellectual our academic stuff that will never win people to God but only the gospel of the kingdom so brothers and sisters let us focus wherever you are share the gospel of the kingdom share the gospel of the kingdom and you'll see what will happen put the seeds and people will flock when Jesus was doing it people were following him yes some people were thinking that healing was the main important thing. No. Those were signs which were coming, which were supporting what he was doing. His focus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And when he focused on the gospel of the kingdom, a lot of things happened. Miracles happened while he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. It's not about us, but it's about God. Because we can't do anything. Only God can heal. Only God can bring life to people. Only God can win people to him himself. Because that is God. My, my brothers and sisters, I just want to urge you right now so that don't decide trade. Continue preaching the gospel of the kingdom because that is our call to preach the word of God. God bless you as you continue in your Christian journey from now and evermore. Amen. Thank you. Mm. Yes. Amen. Amen. Now we will. Let us pray. Might and power belong to you, Father, maker of heaven and earth. You know the number of the stars and follow the wind on which the birds soar. You know when there is thunder in the hills, when the valleys flood with rain, how the heavens stretch out like a red tent. You created the wide earth, orchards and marsh and fields of grass, to feed the flocks and hays, and to grow our daily food. A season is a moment to you. And yet you call us by name. Not one of us is missing. Not one. We offer you your grateful thanks. For it is good to sing your praise. It is good, Father, to come before you. We pray for your world. For the places and people in need. We pray for the people who are really affected by COVID-19. Father, we pray that it is only by you who can challenge this pandemic disease for we know that you are God the mighty one of God yes there is still healing there is still power in your word father we believe in it be with us father we pray for our community for those who are ill and or breathed God at work in our world bring your healing thank you father and help us to continue preaching the word of God in Jesus name I pray Amen. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, I would ask you to hold your offering and um, I would ask you to give according to what God has done in your life. But you are not forced or, or, or being, um, you, are not, you are not being forced to give. So, it is only when you commit your life to God and you want to thank God for what he's done, then you can bring your offerings. I want you to hold your offering before I pray with you. Heavenly Father, I bring our offering in your hands. For we know that without you, we can't do anything. Father, we thank you for everything that you have done to us. For the life you have given us. There are a lot of challenges that we face. But we know that it is only through you that we are able to do what we can. So Father, we thank you for the whole week that you have looked after us and protected us with our families and we bring our offering to you. May you bless this offering, Father, so that it can be used for your kingdom. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, brothers, you can give electronically. You see the uh, uh, bank accounts on the screen as you follow. It's up to you to do that. Let us receive grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Amen.